Hey everyone, today I'm going to be comparing and contrasting the different clouds offered by Microsoft, Amazon and Google. It's going to be a series, I'm going to be trying out different things. So let's start off with Microsoft Azure. Let's go ahead and this is your traditional view you get when you log into Azure. You have all these different services on the left, you can see all these different things. These are like common services perhaps people will use when they're starting out. And if you want to like learn something about a service, you can hover over it. You get a bunch of, you know, training links and stuff. And if there's, for example, a discount you can see for virtual machines. Yeah, you have a discount down here. And so that's really awesome. And yeah, I mean, like this is this is a really nice interface. I've got a dark mode selected. If I go into, I have my view, I have dark, but you can have the standard default theme. And you also have a really friendly accessibility mode where you have high contrast themes as well. You just have the ability to have a dashboard and a dashboard I have like a markdown, I have Seattle Pacific time over here and on the west coast of the US I have Cuba time over here and a bunch of my services which I've used. Uh, the same thing where you can go to all resources and resource groups and see this stuff but it's nice to have it easily accessible. You can put metrics so for example this is a bot I made years ago which I don't know, I'm no longer really monitor, I'm on a different account, my main account I have here. Um, but yeah, so so that's that, it's, it's really cool, really friendly. And um, you've got a cloud shell down here if you want to access stuff. So I can type, for example, AZVM list. Okay. Oh, let me switch account. Oh, I, I have VMs on my other account, definitely. <laughs> AZVM list, should have like JSON data, nice, cool. And so that's that. So you can open this. I don't know how to open it from here, but if you go to shell.azure.com, you get a full screen view of that same thing. It would be nice if they just put it on the, the, the button on the page. Like, that would be kind of nice. And, and the theme, you can't really change the theme from here, but you can change the theme of the whole Azure, but you can change some things over here. So yeah, that's pretty nice. I really like this hamburger style on the left and then uh, this recents and like favorite stuff if you do favorite stuff and um, for example if I did have something else that I wanted to favorite uh, like this uh, went to special anchors and I had for example this and I wanted to favorite that and that, then that's in my favorites over here which is really really nice I really like that Okay, so speeding along, let's go to GCP. So in GCP, this is like your view. You have what's called projects, and these are basically like resource groups. I can go into that on another uh, video. Um, but here, this is your like hamburger menu. You have to click. You can enable that behavior on Azure by clicking this, and then you can collapse over here. But if you go into settings, you can make it so that's a flyout on Azure so you click it like this to open it on GCP by default it's like this and I don't think you can change it to like stay which is unfortunate um, there are services on the left they divide I don't understand why it says marketplace at the top and like IAM above getting started but it's, it's a thing and then they divide stuff into their categories like the subcategories uh, databases storage serverless compute etc and uh, all products they have this division and I like how um, well, not over here but if, if you go into the marketplace they will show um, UI like more visual like you know icons same thing if you go into Azure you can search for their marketplace but in general Azure does seem to have more visual stuff which I really like uh, and the marketplace on, on both Google and uh, uh, Microsoft cloud platforms it will have stuff from partners so you can see like you have something from Confluent over here and, and you know, uh, Pulse, MongoDB, SendGrid, etc. So that's pretty cool. Um, now if we go ahead and we go over to the AWS console. So there's something I really like about AWS's console when you join as a new user and that's you have this dashboard set up for you. So on Azure you have a dashboard but at the beginning it's going to be so at the beginning your dashboard is going to be blank and like like it's just going to be like totally blank like this and, and so like i like how amazon shows you like nice dashboard by default this thing i think isn't there and then you can add 
it there, but that's the only like extra widget you get. Like there's no like customizability. Like for an Azure's dashboard, you can add like clocks, you can add markdown uh, and everything else. So like what I showed you before, it's not as, as, as customizable, unfortunately. And that would be nice, but I do like how a new user starting from the beginning will be able to have all of these things that's showing to them, which is pretty nice. The nice thing, so you have this nice like getting started stuff on AWS, like always shown to you, and you also have these services over here if you click this button, which is really awesome because then you can just dive into things. And what I really like here is that they describe each service because when, for example, on Azure, if you go to all services over here, you can't really see what stuff is, even if you click on it, it doesn't tell you. Like I know, for example, Azure Databox, this is about having a physical device where you get shipped to you, you put on stuff up to 40 terabytes if you don't have the network connectivity or whatever, right? And then you can ship off to Azure, but like, how do I know that here? Uh, at least in AWS, it tells you a bit of information. So that's really nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, so what, what I was saying with theming on, on Azure, you get to choose between dark theme, light theme, Azure theme, whatever, and you also have high contrast modes. AWS and GCP for some reason don't actually have this theming available. What they do have is theming available for the console. So AWS Cloud Shell, it will open in a new window and you can change the theme to be dark over here, which is pretty nice. Um, but like, not for the whole website for some reason and i would think that for, for these platforms you would like to have a theme which you can change just like for the whole place because like the whole website because like you're going to be working with it like all the time pretty much and like i always have mine on dark theme on azure i mean like you could perhaps use a third party extension but like first party supports better and like you might not be able to use a third party extension in your organizational work laptop or device right? Uh, because security reasons, right? It's, it could be fetching your data and sending it off somewhere. Um, and yeah, so I mean, I, I don't know why you can't really edit that, but we go to GCP, so there, Cloud Shell. I actually really like this Cloud Shell. So like, you can change the theme for this for some reason. Over here from dark, light, and you can have a custom theme, which I really like, this ability to have this custom theme. But, Again, this, for some reason, like, it's not intuitive. <laughs> like, I don't know why you, like, you have to enter values here. Uh, but the really nice thing I like about this is if you open editor, this is this is the nice thing. You have this, like, file thingy. Yeah, so this I really love. Like, what you can add files and stuff. Like, this is, to me, it's so cool. It's basically like Visual Studio Code and like, you, like, it's like you have all the APIs for the Google Cloud available to you within here. And so here's the Cloud Shell API itself. It's too cool. Um, Amazon, Microsoft, please add this because like, what? Microsoft, you own Visual Studio Code. You can do it, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, so the next video, I'm gonna be going through a challenge. Let's, let's let's create a virtual machine in all three of these different platforms. So Microsoft Azure, GCP, and AWS, and we'll see what it's like. We're gonna go through the steps of the wizard, the different like terminologies. So like Amazon and Microsoft have a concept known as resource groups, which is a logical grouping of resources. But then Google has these products up here. Maybe maybe this stuff. I don't know. You could teach me, people who are experts at GCP and AWS, let me know. It's been quite a while since I've actually used AWS. It's like 2019, I first ever had my job with doing AWS stuff. And now I'm like fully immersed into Azure. And I'm learning about GCP, but like, you know, I noticed it just looks so similar. <laughs> That's other stuff we're gonna be diving into uh, together. But yeah, I really like uh, bits from every different cloud platform. And hey, we're going to be discovering every single cloud platform together. It's now 3.52 a.m. So I'm going to uh, end this video here. My battery's about to die. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed and we'll learn together. This is really fun. See you and bye-bye.